one thing that's very important for you to learn is to look beyond the symptoms. Too many folks, unfortunately also believers, they only look at the symptoms. They don't look beyond the symptoms. Let me explain what I mean. If you have headache and you go to a physician, he will ask you questions to get a view of what happened to you past days. If he heard that you had an accident, then he may think, you know what, this is your brain processing the pain, so don't worry about it. Or if you have a tumor in your body and it's causing pain in your brain, that can be all the, the, the headache can be a symptom that's a tumor somewhere. It can also be that you didn't sleep well or that you were drunk last Friday and that you have a hangover, a delayed hangover. So the headache is a symptom. It's not the real thing that's going on. It is real, it is going on, but it's not the root of it. Too many folks, whenever there's dysfunction, they just want to be relieved from the dysfunction. They have no interest in looking deeper into things to figure out what's the root of the dysfunction. You can have a kid, an eight-year-old kid, that's very angry often and very argumentative. Now, that's not a natural behavior for a kid, okay? A kid may be a bit, I would say, I won't say, I won't say annoying, according to the parents, because a kid wants to do its will, but for a kid to be argumentative and fighting and arguing all the time, it's not even natural for an adult to be like that, especially if it's a kid. So, when a child psychologist sees this, this the child psychologist is going to look at the family situation. He's going to look into the marriage of the parents. He's going to look into how things are at school. He's going to look at all of it. So the child psychologist is going to interview the parents. And let's say now you have this kid. Let's call her Laura. He's nine years old and he's quite argumentative. And then the psychologist asks the parents what type of arguments is she using. And she and they tell her that she uses the uh, the B word, the F word, she's using things as you always make me miserable and all of that. And then the child psychologist asked uh, the parent, she, did she really say you always make me miserable? And then he asked the parents, uh, does she even know what the word miserable means? The parents said, well, probably not. Then the child psychologist asked them where did she get this word miserable? It's not a word eight-year-olds tend to use. So the parents were thinking, and then suddenly the mother mentioned that there was this Uncle Kevin and his wife that often came to visit them, and that they always managed to keep the little daughter under control. And then the alarmment of it is child psychologist. The child psychologist asks them, um, ma'am, tell me about your brother, this Kevin. How is this a relationship with his wife? And the, and the mother said, well, how should I know? I don't, I don't want to interfere in his marriage. I mean, okay, the guy has his dysfunctions, but still, he loves her. Do they have kids? And the mother said, well, they have a two-year-old son. And then the, he asked the mother, why is your brother often at your place? Then the mother said, well, it's the wife that often wants to come back. She doesn't really have many friends. And then the child psychologist asked, oh, so she often hangs out with your daughter, right? And then the father gets what's going on. The mother is in denial. Now what happened here? The child psychologist was trained by his university and during his internship he was trained to look at the bigger picture. He was trained in going beneath the surface to look at the root of things. When the child psychologist heard that the sister-in-law of the mother 
often came and she often came to see the nine-year-old and back then she was a bit younger the child psychologist knew instantly this is a female child molester this is this is a perfect this is a sick individual the father recognized it and reported it and later found out that this woman was borderline and that she was taking out her rage on that on that child because she didn't want to face things she didn't take it out on her husband because she was frightened that he may file for a divorce so the male behavior of the child was a symptom that something disturbing was going on the parents only looked at the manifestation and they were upset with manifestation and the only thing they were interested in was to be relieved from the manifestation they just want to be left alone and expect the kid to comply with them so they had a narcissistic attitude which was wrong that's something they need to repent from but at least the father realized not a minute something bad's going on and when he realized that he was wrong he admitted that there was more going on and he even admitted that he was too selfish he just wanted the daughter to just comply so they are at ease he didn't pay attention to the environment the mother at the other hand did not want to accept that the wife of her brother was like this but it was let's say it is what it is now about that kid kids become teenagers the teenagers become adults at least that's respected unless they're killed in between or they, have, or, or they fatally die when someone is in the teenage years much of what has been brought into them as a kid goes to the subconscious and it goes into the background so consciously they may comply with society and be polite kind of all of that but the issues are in the background sooner or later those issues are going to manifest now when they manifest that individual needs to acknowledge it and look for help but there are folks who just don't want to face themselves and they become reprobates because they always want to dump frustrations onto others to be relieved those are narcissists okay i'm not just calling everyone a narcissist okay because you have folks out there who call everyone a narcissist just because others were a bit self-centered for a moment i'm not doing that a narcissist is a reprobate individual because their only concern is to relieve themselves at all costs sometimes at expense of their own lives they want to relieve themselves they are pathological does it mean that uh, they are not guilty they know what they're doing but they're pathological that's why they do what they do normally what they do doesn't add up but they don't want it made not add up so they want to dump it on others and at the same time withdraw sympathy and positivity from from everyone else now i'm not here to defend nor to bring sympathy to the narcissist what i'm saying is you need to look beneath the surface now if someone has turned into a narc they need to face it see christ to be delivered no excuses okay but if someone is not a narcissist but they just have issues look beneath the surface don't just go around expecting people to function properly and pleasant to you all the time what we call proper functioning often has to do with us wanting to be left alone and expecting others to make us at ease this self-centered narcissistic attitude you need to unlearn it because here's here's the deal well, not the deal here's what's going on when uh, when symptoms manifest that something is wrong people often want to just either ignore it or they want to fight the symptom or the one through whom the symptom manifests so that they won't have to examine themselves because the real fear a lot of broke people have is that it's a fear to be mentally challenged they don't want to face a mental challenge they don't want to face facts that maybe their expectations don't add up that maybe how they relate to others isn't correct so that itself is a dysfunction that they don't want to see about themselves so when something when, when, when something someone else malfunctions it's a good opportunity for them 
to project everything onto the individual so that they won't have to look at themselves. That's why when there's a dysfunction somewhere, always look at the whole situation. Don't just look at the individual that malfunctions. You can have someone that entered into a car and suddenly he lost it and he drove into a crowd of people. And later they found out the man had mental problems. They didn't receive uh, enough treatment. And then you're going to ask, okay, the guy had mental problems and people kind of forget about it. But hold on a minute, how did he develop those mental problems? He didn't start as an adult with mental problems, he started as a little baby. What happened in between? Who contributed to it? That means that there was a sick environment that, that was kept going and the dysfunction manifested in someone driving to a crowd and killing folks. So what needs to happen is, folks need to look at the case, look at the background, and deal with the perpetrators that enable that toxic environment. Dealing with those folks, calling them to account, is not going to undo the damage that happened. But it does show that the community wants justice. Everyone needs to comply and contribute to a healthy environment. What often happens is, people don't want to look beyond the symptoms. They just want the symptoms to go, to disappear, so they are left alone. This narcissistic attitude of wanting to be left alone is what keeps the world in the self-destructive state it is. Look, some folks, you need to move on without them because they never want to look beyond the symptoms. And such folks, eventually, the enemy will use them to trap you, to endanger you, to hinder you. And don't you know that there are folks who just don't want to admit that the parents were wrong? That the environment was wrong? So people just don't want to face anything. Especially folks that don't want to face anything, they will. They sometimes don't even want to acknowledge the symptoms when something is wrong. They especially want to embrace symptoms of something is good. Because they don't dare to hold, on, to hold on to something that's good. They want to chase what's good and trap what's good and exploit what's good. But, but maintaining something that's good, that means participation. And participation means self-examination. Ooh, and they don't want to do self-examination. I'm telling you, look beyond the symptoms. Some of you... The only reason the oppression around you continues is because you're not looking beyond the symptoms. Some of you, if you would look beyond the symptoms, you'll see the pattern and you'll easily step out of the pattern and things will be different. I'm telling you, look beyond the symptoms. Agree with Christ and be at peace.